Hello everyone. You are currently sat on TC. Um, today we need to do some work on TC, so this will be a new adventure. Um, can't remember which which number. I'll insert it now. Um, we need to work on the steering rack, and to do that, I need to remove both the wheels and disconnect the track rod ends, and then disconnect the steering column at the bottom. So we'll try this, hopefully it won't be too difficult. So I'll get you off the bonnet, put you somewhere else and see if we can film a bit. Well he's up in the air as you can see. Um, I've loosened the wheel nuts so he's high enough so I'm not gonna, I, I'm taking you off the tripod because obviously you're not gonna be able to see. Now there's a bolt there and you can see the bush and the U-shaped bracket there and on the outside there's another one and there's one behind it as well so I'm going to get the wheels off we've got to undo those on both sides we don't need to remove tie rods that's fine don't need to remove them at all but these these ball joints they should come out quite nicely um, they're brand new of course and we also need to disconnect the um, Let's bring you up into the engine bay. I don't know if you can see that arm there as it goes down into here it bolts into the steering uh, rack. So yeah we need to do that. I've got the Haynes book with me so just for references make sure I know what I'm doing. Well, wheel is off as you can see. Um, I now need to get in under the car and I need to take apart, let see if we can get the camera in there. I've got a light here as well. So let's try and shine the light in. What I need to do is in here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. Hang on. Sorry, the camera shut off. Um, in here, I don't know if you can make out any of that, part of the steering rack there bolts to the rack, or the, the steering column. I need to dismantle that, so what I need to do is be underneath the car. Um, so I'll do the best I can with that and I'll get back to you. Well, I uh, couldn't remove the, the bolt from the lower part of the steering column. Um, I, so I had to dismantle the ones at the top and it's it's triangular in shape and sticks through the bulkhead. Um, I'll try and zoom in on that a moment so you can see. There you go. So you know it's in the dead ahead position. Um, it can only go on kind of like one way really and the bolts have to be against this upper right hand flat side. Sorry. The right hand side of that chamfer or that triangle, the right hand side of that triangle. So the next job, um, what I had to do was put the put the car, uh, put a brick under the wheel so that there was a bit more weight to stop the steering from moving, but it didn't really happen. Um, so you're probably wondering what else I might have to do here apart from getting the steering rack out. Well, I need to take the hubs off both sides because they need their uh, bearings replacing. So. Bearings are on order, so they're coming. Um, and what I can do, I can see about getting the discs um, surfaced because they are quite pitted and corroded. Um, and yeah, it would be nice to take them down a few thou. So I'll look into getting that done, but I'll, but I'll clean up these bits here and paint it all up and make it all look all nice. Okay, may send out a breath, because I am. Using the hammer on that ball joint trying to get it off was a... Oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong direction. Getting that ball joint off was a pain in the backside. So now I need to get that bolt off. The one behind it and that one and the one behind it and hopefully they're not going to cause me too much trouble. So I'll give them a squirt with some GT85 and hopefully I'll be able to get the steering rack out in there with the uh, column piece, hopefully it will. Um, if it doesn't, 
it's going to be a problem because I'm kind of hoping it will. Right, let's go. Okay, I'm uh, resting you on the toolbox. I'm wondering, like, that's going to be a spanner job, isn't it? Because we're not going to get in there. Actually, hang on. There's not a lot of clearance in there. There's more clearance on this one. So what we need to do is figure out what size these are first. And I don't have my um, my vernier with me. Right, that's not a 17, that's too big. So I'm gonna have to move you and find the right spanner. Well, it's 9 sixteenths or uh, 14 in English. GT85 smells so much nicer than WD. Alright, let's move my pillow. I'm going to have to lie down for this one, I think. It's not going to be fun. Try to get these out. It's not just the one in the front, it's the one in behind. Right, where's the socket? The ratchet, sorry. I left that on the engine bay. Yeah. If I'm in the way, I do apologise. Right, there we go. Let's leave that on there for a moment. We need to get this ratchet on there. I'll get it on on the uh, on there properly. It's not sitting on there very well. And that 14 is chewed. Okay, cut. We'll come back with a better socket. And this I have to use a, a spanner, which won't be fun. Well, that is a spanner. So I might as well give it a go, and if I, if, I, if I need to, I'll put an extension bar on it. Yes, I know it's a swan neck and it's not the most ideal, but it's not work. Yeah, it's pretty stuck. Um, huh. Where's the other one? There's another bolt in the back there. Can't see one. Can't feel anything under there. So I, I, into, ah, that could be. That could be captive, but I don't know. I don't have a good digger. Which would be nice if I did, but I don't. Let's try and use my foot, shall I? done that numerous times. Stay on there please. Oh, that's turning. That's good. Push a bit further. There we go. Yeah, it looks like that is definitely. Now it's loose, I'm not going to get that one out. But then the one on the back is going to pull it down. Need to get the one in the back out. Yeah, 
in the bottom of the engine here yeah the light is causing it to flicker you can see that socket down there underneath that uh, socket is a bolt holding on the um, the, the bush and the steering rack and it had two tabs sticking up I had to lean into the engine bay literally while it's on jack stands um, and hammer it with a fine screwdriver not a chisel I don't have a chisel small enough so um, I've managed to get the socket on there it's a 17 at the back and a 14 at the front so time to get under the car and see if it'll undo Okay, so everything is unbolted. Now I've got to try and see if I can get this thing out. Um, move everything out of the way. Um, make sure I've got all the bolts and everything all where they need to be. I think the most interesting thing is trying to get out the uh, the lower. There we go. Look. Let's move. Oh. Right. Okay. How does this actually come out? <laughs> Slide it forwards. Is that the way to do it? It's got to try and come forward. And then it can be slid out sideways. I think I might just check the Haynes manual. Okay, I've got my stuck sockets down there. And the light's going to go funny again, sorry. Um, the... Literally, I'm going to get this out and I'm going to show you that the um, the rubber for the steering column has completely split, um, which probably one of the problems when I'm driving are getting rattling. So I'm going to get this out and I'm going to show you. <sighs> okay, guys, I've been at this for quite a few hours now and I can't get the axe, the, the front drive shaft out um, or steering shaft. Um, I, j I can't get it out. I've jacked the engine up. I've, everything is free. Everything's unbolted. And it just won't come out. Um, I've created free space there, but these rubber bushes, when they're on there, they're just we're right in the way. I don't know if I need to remove the engine to be able to bloom and do so. I shouldn't have thought so. But please, someone let me know. This is a, I'm not enjoying this at all right now, but thank you for watching. Feel free to support the channel. There is merch available, t-shirts, mugs, stickers as well. So thank you for watching and uh, see if I can get off the floor. Well, I'll come down to the, get to the shed with this, um, this bar for the steering and it's just as well I did take it off really because the rubber has completely perished I mean, that's that's way too flexible and it's definitely split definitely split well we got a crack where was it there was definitely a crack I saw it there Sorry, camera. I was looking at the. Uh, there's a small split there. I mean, that's not really a huge amount, but I can just. Sorry, I can just push it with my thumb. Look, it's so weak. Um, and yeah, filthy as well. Um, so replacement time. Well, finally got it out. 
I came back up today with a fresh mind and a rested body and uh, I jacked up the engine again and because the, the jack had lowered itself so I jacked it up and I managed to get this end free enough so I could actually attack it so I squirted up underneath um, underneath the edge here and uh, along the side of the rubber and just got got a, got a big hammer and just whacked it numerous times that it started lifting so then I could get in there but this was still a bit too tall so I couldn't get it out between this and the underside of the sump so managed to get that off and then wiggled it all free I had to turn it a few times but yeah it's as you can see out so next job is get this home get that one off get both rubbers off because I know that's got a split in the bottom so that'll come off quite easily so there we go look but the polys I don't think they're that easy I don't think they have splits in them so it may be a case of just wiggling it over everything to get it in okay next job is to remove the hubs which means I need to remove the um, the brake calipers I mean, Pete, you did these up tight. Can't get in there. Did you use a gun? I think the other side's going to be quite tough to get off. I know you can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. I'll cut this bit out. You don't need to see this. Well, unfortunately while I was undoing this, I found that the ball joint is split. It's got a nice big hole in it. So that's going to have to come out as well. Wonderful. Well, as you can see, the hubs are off, um, and that one's in not bad shape. The plate on the back of there, you've got a bit of a bend here, and I think that's supposed to be like that, but this one is rather chewed up, so that needs to be sorted out, and it's rather flaky. Uh, I did notice, actually, that um, I might be wrong on the bearing side of things, because I turn that over. Ah, hang on. It's made a lot of noise if I with that one because of the the bent backing plate. Let's move that over there. These things weigh an absolute ton. So heavy. Okay. No sound whatsoever. But as you can see from the back there, the state of that, they are in rough shape so they definitely need 
resurfacing. I just need to find someone who can do it. Um, trying to find machinist shops where I live, and it all seems it all seems like they are uh, businesses for like uh, trade. So I need to try and find someone who knows all about this stuff because they they do need doing. I don't think I'm going to need to do those berries, but the ones I've bought, they're going to be in the store, they're going to be in the uh, toolkit, ready for if they are needed, and yeah, I am going to be ordering a new ball joint. The original ones, I don't think they're in warranty anymore, because uh, I worked on them not long after I got the car, and that's quite some time ago now. I don't think they'd be in warranty anymore. But yeah, get these home, get them clean. Let's go back to TC a moment. I'll show you what else I was trying to do. I was trying to get the shock absorber out and it kind of worries me that uh, this spring might go pating and kill me. So I'd rather get the hub back on uh, once it's done and then um, go for the shock absorber. Um, I do have a set to go in but uh, yeah I need to have a look at them make sure they're okay. Uh, the, the Haynes book says to jack it up um, and put some pressure on it and it just lifts the entire car so these springs are seriously strong seriously strong no joke there we're in the shed and we're getting this off of here I don't have the correct tool for this so uh, bear with me and it is coming off so that's good There we go. Oh, that looks decent. Okay. Let's put that. Oh, cracky. Okay, I'm just going to knock that down. There's the little hammer. There it is. Sorry if I get in the way. Not a number of ways of getting these out. Right, okay, I've got new ones of those so I can replace that. Oh, that's actually snapped, that one, look. Wow. Didn't expect that. Okay. Let's get that cover off. Okay. Let's see what size that is. Is it a 28? Seems to be. Oh, not tight at all. It doesn't need to be. All it's doing is holding the bearings in. You tighten it up, then you release it slightly. Oh. that off. There we go. Okay, now what we need to do, I'm just going to put that down. I need to get this plate off. Oh, they've got locking tabs. I didn't see that. 
Yeah, there's locking tabs on there. Heads in cleaning, that's no biggie. Where are we going to put them? Put them down there. Looking very crispy, these. There we go. So that's one down. And I won't show the other one. It's not really any need to. It's exactly the same process. I thought um, when I was looking at these that because they rotate nicely, they don't think, I think it was rotating the discs and the pads were moving slightly. That's what I think it was. But on closer inspection, if you look in here, look, you can see a gap in there, there, and there's some other little gaps and there's even broken pieces, there's bits broken away. So this grease is, is splitting, like it's moisture is going. All right, let's lift that bearing out. That's come out so easy. Look at that. I don't even touch that. See, I can't see. Actually, yes, I can. I can see slight, very slight shadows on the, uh, on there. I'm just going to pop that back in a second. Because all it does, it just sits there. It, there's no tension at all. Um, but all this grease looked like it was drying up. And it does look a little less nice than it could have been. I don't know if uh, if Pete did grease these. I don't know. Um, I did watch the videos. I don't remember him doing it. But maybe he did it off, uh, off camera. Um, let's have a look in the back. I'll hold on to the front there. Now that's that literally just sits on the uh, spline there. Now there is a seal here. That doesn't look like it's ever been removed. And it doesn't look like... Um, hang on. That does actually that does look like it a kind of okay. It is very possible that these could be the originals. I don't know, but either way, um I've got new ones, I might as well do it. Okay. Um hoping the camera keeps recording because it keeps shutting off and it's I'm gonna have to get a new one. Right, well somehow. Now I've just noticed actually I was moving this, I flipped it upside down, I've taken the other bearings out and I've put them in a box out of the way. Now I was just moving it and I noticed that that isn't even like there's no pressure at all and this is just coated in gunk so let's see if I can get this can I get it out using a pick? I don't know it's absolutely filthy that bearing is not staying so no this has definitely not been out before So, yeah, I'm not going to get that out with a pick. Let's grab a screwdriver. Well, the bottom's quite flexible where it meets the, the inside. But the top is dry as a bone. 
Hang on, let's get that, get that, get that off of there. God, it's just crud all over it. No, that's definitely been in there a long time. Sorry, everyone. The uh, the camera uh, just exhausted its battery. Um, okay, so I managed to get the the race out. Uh, the seal, sorry, the seal. Sorry about the wind. It's just literally started picking up now. Typical, really. Um, you can see just above my glove there. There's like rust. Now the original one, the seal that I took out was very, very stuck. Wait for the motorbike to go by. It's rather loud. Um, so yeah, it had to come out. Um, I don't think these bearings have been out. Uh, the inner race, I don't know if they do come out, but it looks like they do. Let's see if the camera will focus. There. No, sometimes you can tap the screen and it will focus. But you can just about make out some dark marks. Hang on, I'll use my finger. About there. You can make out some dark marks. Excuse me, that might be um, oil. I don't know. I haven't given it a wipeout yet. Sorry, I keep shaking the camera. You can see some dark marks. And there's lots of gunk in there. Absolutely tons of it. Um, so, I'm going to give this a wipeout with some gre um, grease. Rags. Um, and see how it looks but the inside where the seal goes I'm going to clean it up with some wet and dry very very fine wet and dry but yeah got to get these bolts out separate the disc from the hub you can see more pitting here look and it's quite bad there um, I found up a company local to me they can do discs uh, but they want to see them to give me a quote so that's the next plan. So I've got to get these off of here and give give everything a good clean. It's just really filthy. But yeah, that's the main plan. Main goal is getting these off. But in the process, I need to get those bearings out because uh, well, I have done, but they they needed doing. Well, it's all cleaned up, on this side at least, and well, on the other side, I just punched it through some cardboard, put it on the top of the bench vise, and I'm going to give it a lick of paint, some uh, zinc primer, trying to help keep the rust at bay. Um, I did put in two photos, uh, well, a photo just now of uh, before and after with the other one, which is still on the step. Uh, but it's come up really, really well. I've had to use the bigger wire wheel, and it got in there quite nicely. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a lick of paint and I'll come back to you. There we go. Nice grey coat. I'll turn the torch on on the phone so you can see it a bit more. But um, that's only like one coat. So I'll let it dry. And hopefully I can give it another lick of paint on that side. And I've sprayed around the edges as well, around the sides. So this curved piece is sprayed. Curved piece on there is sprayed. I sprayed both sides of the arm here. Um, not too much, of course, um, but I want it a decent coat because when I put the black on, you know, I want it to be able to stick to it. So, yeah, um, I'm going to put this out of the way now and I'm going to clean the other one over there.
Right, um, as you can see we're back up with TC, grill off and stuff all around. Now why is stuff all around? The grill's out um, on the floor over there, uh, taking the wing off, it's over there. And the reason for that is probably as, you, as you've seen from the previous part of the video, we need to get this lot out. Now, my friend who's been helping me, um, Jen, said to me that we need to get the knuckle back in. Uh, so we can bolt it all down so when we undo the top part the spring doesn't explode and go through the entire car and possibly our heads. So uh, we're going to take a small break now and we're going to go and go and get the knuckles, have a quick cup of tea and then come back. Um, I can't, You can't really see a huge amount in there but the bolt going across the top here uh, in the top, top of the mount is coming free. So luckily the nut has come off and it's the bar is free to move, so hence why we do need to uh, get that, uh, get the knuckle back in, um, or stub axle, sorry. Um, the lower ball joint uh, is gonna have to go back in temporarily, even though it has a split in it, it still needs to be fixed. Um, so yeah, we'll do that and we'll come back to you shortly. Okay, so, it's not massively visible right now, but I've got the, uh, I've not hit the bolt a few times forward and back, got some spray in there, and now I need to try and knock it through. Got blind, it's very, very tight in here. Oh, there we go, something went dull. Oh, I see what's happened. Yes. Uh, it looks like... The bolt, the spring is pushed against the bolt. caught on something. I won't go any further than that. Yeah, that will go. But it's not... Hang on. Use. Hang on, that one. it's going to be that longer one, isn't it? Of the nice ones. Oh well, needs must. Hmm. There we go. Wow, that thread is knackered. We're still recording. That thread's going to be cleaned up. That bolt is shot. Okay. So, tighten this frame. There we go. Shot the tip, which means it's free. 
this thing if you go back. I'm scared. Okay, so this is going to be. I've spoken to a friend online. I just want to see one of my is in there. We need to get it lined up. It's quite nice. This one needs to come back out again because uh, I, I still need to replace that. Uh, uh, that boot. I'll do that in a separate video. Right, I'm going to end this video for now. I've seen all these things painted up and everything. Um, the other side is going to be exactly the same as doing this. Um, you see the spring going in. Um, I will do another video when we do the um, poly bushes and such. 
but, um, and I'll try and film putting the uh, steering rack back in because that is part of this video. If not, I'll uh, I'll add it into another one. Um, thank you for thank you for watching, and uh, feel free to go and look at the uh, Patreon page and uh, all those other little bits and pieces. Uh, yeah, I need to get this out.